Hi, I'm Mike Wushong, Vice President and Leader of Juniper's Cloud Ready Data Center business. And let me add my welcome to Juniper's 2021 Summit. Over the next few minutes, I want to provide a view into what we've been working on in the data center. And following that, we want to give you an up-close look into one of the real highlights for our portfolio. In that demo, we hope to make our vision more concrete so you can see what we can do for you today. Before I get into the what, though, I want to start with the why that underpins everything we do. As you've heard a few times today, as a company, we're relentlessly pursuing the big idea of delivering an experience-first portfolio. And this extends, as you probably expect, to our data center offerings as well. So what does it mean to be experience first? In a sentence, as you heard Rami say, it's the acknowledgement that we need to move beyond building better networks to making networking better. Networks are nouns. They're defined by the hardware, the software, the protocols, the technology. Networking is a verb. It's defined by the people, the process, the tools. If we want to move data center networking forward, we need to use the noun to transform the verb. We need to move past speeds and feeds. We need to untether ourselves from some of our legacy roots. Where the past was dominated by the command line and the vendor certifications required to demonstrate proficiency, the future, and really the present, is about leveraging software to change how we think about operations. But even how we think about software has to change. The goal isn't to recast the command line in the cloud. Wrapping up the same basic way of thinking and calling it software defined or as a service isn't helping anyone. Superficial changes like this are an empty gesture and they're certainly not enough. If we get through a generational change in operations, and that's what cloud is by the way, and all we do is change the point of interaction from the device to a controller, we will have collectively failed. Operations is so much more and it doesn't begin on day two. At Juniper, we believe operations starts with planning, continues through deployment, and of course includes the continuous monitoring and upkeep of the data center. It's about getting things right from the outset and making sure they stay right. This vision is our guiding principle and it drives everything we've been doing in the data center since the last time we all came together. Today, we wanna to give you a peek into what we've been up to. We want to show you what operations can look like. And we want to leave you with a few clues about what's next. Everything we do to evolve data center operations is built on some key foundational elements. Our data center portfolio is anchored by our QFX and PTX and soon ACX switches. We've built out cost optimized 25 and 100 gig platforms and we remain absolutely committed to helping organizations navigate their own transitions. In the past year, we expanded our hardware portfolio with the industry's first 400 gig Trident 4-based platform. And it all runs Junos, which means you get the familiar one Junos experience featuring the world's most advanced routing stack. But if operations is the focus, the foundation needs to include more than just hardware. The most basic premise of automation is see something, do something. And that means that telemetry plays a leading role. In Junos, we've always been the leader in all things telemetry, from programmatic access to streaming telemetry. And as the world moves to in-band telemetry, we'll be there as well. And that brings me to our primary focus, data center operations. When it comes to operations, there are different approaches. For companies where the infrastructure is part of the product, think cloud providers and SaaS companies, the goal is to eke out every efficiency possible leveraging commercial and open source software supported by a DevOps or an NRE type framework. Here, it's not enough to deliver a product. We need to provide a practice that combines the underlying technologies with a lightweight support and services surround to help companies contextualize their operational practices. Not every company can be Amazon or Netflix, but with a little bit of help, we believe we can take the first several steps with you. If you've got automation ambitions, but haven't had the time or the space to make as much progress as you'd like, we need to talk. For other companies where IT is an enabler, the focus is on simplifying operations. These companies trade in agility and reliability, and this is where our really big news plugs in. 
If operations is important, then what better move than to go out and acquire the industry's best? Earlier this year, we brought Abstra into the mix. They're the pioneers of real change in this space. Abstra literally coined the term intent-based networking. They're built around the idea that you ought to specify what you want, not how it's implemented. And the best part? Abstra does this in a way that allows multi-vendor deployments, legitimately allowing you to run our solutions alongside our competitors. No one else is even trying to do this. And of course, networking isn't the only piece of the stack. We've built integrations into VMware. We have the single best management solution for Sonic with Abstra. We've been driving cloud-native networking with Kubernetes using Contrail as an SDN. And we have technology that plays into the broader multi-cloud ecosystem. So that's a fairly condensed view of our strategy. We're excited about what we've been up to. Our customers have been telling us that we're leading where they want to go. And you know who else seems pretty bullish on where we're headed? The analysts. This past year, Juniper was named a leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for data center and cloud networking for the third straight year. And with Abstra as one of Gartner's cool vendors, we think the combination of Juniper and Abstra is even stronger going forward. So clearly, while we've accomplished a lot, the highlight of our year of disruption is bringing Abstra into the portfolio. So let's spend a little bit of time there. And there's no one better to talk about how Abstra will change your data center experience than Mansoor Karam, Abstra's former CEO and now my partner for all things data center operations. Hello, I am Mansoor Karam, Vice President of Products and former co-founder and CEO of Abstra. Running the data center can be challenging. You may be struggling with the trade-off between agility on one hand, that is, doing something fast to meet business demand, and reliability on the other hand, that is, doing it right, to avoid mistakes. You may also be concerned about constrained vendor choice, or simply put, lock-in. Indeed, the overwhelming majority of management solutions on the market today only work with one vendor. And adding to this, you may need to overcome critical sourcing and skill shortages. In a recent Gardner study, 61% reported that a lack of staff expertise and skills were a challenge to their organization. Against these set of challenges, what is Juniper bringing in the Abstra system that is different. One, better day two operations. Unlike other solutions for day two, the Abstra system starts with the network design. It captures in business terms, in a single source of truth, what is expected, what we call intent. Then it consistently checks against the expected state through rich telemetry finding what matters and proactively alerting on just the real issues. Two, a turnkey and unified system. As a software only solution, Abstra is quick to install and then it automates all aspects of your network, the design, the deployment, and the operation. In this way, Abstra is one unified system for both architects, and operators. And three, an open and multi-vendor approach. Abstra can help you manage your network in a single or multi-vendor environment to include not only Juniper, but also Sonic, VMware, Arista, and Cisco, amongst others. Let's take a look at what the Abstra solution is. The Abstra intent-based system begins with the design functions of the architects. With Abstra, you no longer need to worry about specific VLANs or some other arcane configurations. In one unified solution, you simply describe what you want. For example, reachability, security, quality of experience, or compliance. And the software takes care of all of the details of the how with Abstra's pre-built templates automating the design of your network, and blueprints that fully automate the processes of building and deploying the network. Then the Abstra system 
extends to network operators with continuous automation, analytics, and assurance. It's there to alert operators, you, when brownouts and operational deviations occur, along with conveying why the alerts happened through root cause identification. Specific functions for controlling and managing change close the loop to deliver the fully assured and automated data center network. No one else in the industry has this, a system for describing the way that the network fabric should behave and then software that automatically translates those requirements to configure the fabric accordingly, assures it is so, and also lets you proactively know when and why an issue may be brewing. Juniper Abstra lets you set your operational model around what you need in your network, not by a vendor's dictated way. Abstra lets you readily adopt automation throughout the entire lifecycle to automate every day. Starting with day zero, you use Abstra for design, pre-validation, and installation with all the details covered. For example, Abstra will render your cabling plan. Then you continue with your day one deployment with support for zero touch provisioning and pre-built blueprints for the most common network setups and a way to easily tune these for your environment. And completing the lifecycle, you use Abstra as a powerful tool for day two and beyond operations with visualization, analytics, insights, validation, compliance, root cause identification, troubleshooting, optimization, and a structured means for change. But you've heard enough from me. Let's take a closer look at how it all actually works. I'd like to introduce you to Scott Snedden and Jeff Tensura for the highlight of our session, our demo challenge. Thanks, Mansoor. Uh, my name is Scott Snedden. I'm joined today by my good friend, Jeff Tansura. We're on the data center team here at Juniper Networks. So Jeff, I've been working with the team for a little while now. Uh, they're working on moving away from their vintage network hardware um, and some of those legacy designs that they have in place. They really like the idea of EVPN, VXLAN, IP fabric, all of that sort of stuff. We wanna get going on the design. We wanna get going on, on getting things implemented. We've got a whiteboard diagram, but we need to move to the next step. Let's say they wanna build a leaf spine two pod data center. Getting into the detail of all that can oftentimes take days, weeks. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be captured. Can the Appster intent-based system help us with that? Hey, Scott, great to see you. And with pleasure, I'm going to guide you through design steps needed to build data center according to business logic you expressed. When we start building data center, we always start with design phase, and I'm going to show you a number of pre-built templates we are going to use to build the data center. We start with rep templates. I've pre-built two, one of them with two leaves and for servers with no external connectivity and another one that's very similar, but with external connectivity that is validated during the template building phase. Now we are going to apply the REC template we've just built into template of the data center. What you're going to see now is how your data center is going to look when you build it. Exactly as you said, and according to your intended business logic, we are going to have a couple of super spine and uh, two pots with two leaves each. Now we are going to apply template to blueprint. And blueprint we are building, we are going to call it Scott because I really like Scott. We are going to match the template we've pre-created and attach it to Blueprint. What you see here is exactly your network ready model and all the parameters that needed to be there. We already know them. It's going to be a couple of leaves. And now we are going to see the configuration on the leaf is completely empty. We have no villains configured. We have no routing instance. The only routing instance you see is for management or really next nice up to the management interface. Since we have validated on the device itself that it's empty, now we can go on and configure services. 
If you want to see full video, please go and watch it on YouTube. What we have configured here is security zone that is layer two segmentation called Scott as well as virtual network that's layer two segmentation that guess what we called again Scott. Now we are going to commit the changes. When you use AS for configuration, you always stage first so you can review all the changes and you never push configuration without reviewing it. So given we reviewed it and it's what we want, we are going to commit it. And we are going to call it Scott again. At this point in time, we take logical data models, run them through transformation, generate configuration that is going to be pushed to the devices. Now it's done, network is fully configured, has all the parameters, all the routing semantics, everything we want it to be. And we see that everything is green, meaning system reports back, configuration that had been pushed is valid, has been applied, and derived states are correct. Everything is green. And this is how we want to see our network. Let's check the devices. Now we are looking at routing tables. And guess what? We see tables called Scott. We see Scott EVPN table that holds all the EVPN routes for the routing instance Scott, as well as INET0 and INET6 table that have all the routes that are related here. Most importantly, BGP VPN table has been instantiated where we keep all the routes that came from other EVPN routers. Now we are looking at routing instances. As you could see, there's new routing instance called Scott that has all the parameter that required for EVPN VXLAN to work. And VNI ID is 10,000 as well as route target. So it's provided by the system. So we know exactly what it should be. We don't use any automatic options and it's all predictable. So as you could see, we've configured virtual networks, security zones, all done, and device on the state validates all the configurations working correctly, all the configuration in place. Back to you. Wow, that was quick. I barely had time to get a cup of coffee. Um, so, I mean, this is clearly saving a ton of time with, with getting things uh, designed and deployed. A lot of customers um, want to automate, but they maybe, don't have the time to spend on the learning curve to get things automated. They also might not have expertise in BGP and, and you've shown us that, you, that the AppStream and temp -based system configured all that for them. So, so that's a really powerful tool. All right, so now the app team just called and uh, they need to deploy that app that they've been developing tonight. Um, I guess the marketing team is gonna run a big social media push and they're expecting a ton of traffic to come hit that app and so, as with everything, it's a fire drill, and, and we've got to get that app pushed out and ready to go. And that means a bunch of stuff has to happen on the network. Um, so you created the EVPN contacts and, and the VLANs and all the stuff to accommodate that app. But hey, guess what? That app needs to run in both data centers. So now we've got to figure out the data center interconnect portion of that. Can the AppStr intent-based system help with that? With pleasure. And this is where we shine. What we are going to do now, we are going to create EVPN gateway that will interconnect to data centers together and create common network. We will go to workflow called create EVPN gateway, call it again spot, provide its IP address, its IS number, and let's say it's going to be 10 hops away, so TTL of 10. We'll keep the rest of parameters by the default. What's important now, since EVPN gateway is a logical function, system allows us to choose how resilient we want to be. It could go on single device, or probably you should do at least two for resiliency if one goes into maintenance or just break down. So you could see now that we are going to choose two leaves in different pots for resiliency to provide this function. So I'm going to choose two different leaves where EVPN gateway function will be instantiated and commit the configuration. As always, configuration is staged, but not committed. In order to make it work, we are going to commit it. And this is when it's going to take really place. So let's validate first what we see. Scott, IP address, ISN, TTL, and default parameters for hold and keep alive. It's instantiated in two leaves. So from configuration perspective, 
everything is right and correct. We can go and commit the configuration. And Scott, we are done. You've got fully working EVP and connectivity between two different data centers. Oh, back to me already. Wow. So I thought I'd have time to lay down a track or two while I'm here in my home studio. Um, okay. So we can get everything going really quickly. Um, you know, I, I, we've got the data center interconnect built, that application's ready to roll. Now, here's a scenario that never happens in reality. The app team called and there's a bug and they need to roll their application back. I guess we're gonna postpone that marketing launch and uh, the app team needs to go debug their code. So we've got to pull that network configuration out. Um, you know, we got to roll back that data center interconnect. We don't want to leave that stuff sitting there while they're troubleshooting their app. I know in Junos, I could log into the CLI and roll back the config. All of us that have been using Junos for a while love that feature. Um, and so, you know, in the old model, I bet I could get that done in 30 minutes, log into each CLI and hit roll back on, on each of those switches and validate that everything's done. But I bet the apps are intent-based system can beat that. So Jeff, do you think you can get that done in a minute? I'll take a challenge. And if you lose, you owe me a beer. You got it. We are going to use functionality we call Time Voyager that allows you to move in time. So anytime you commit, we create a snapshot of whole network, all its states, all configurations, and save it. So if you need to roll back the previous state or one before, you can easily do it by rolling back your system exactly to this state. So as you can see here, last state, known state is gateway. One will configure the gateway. So what we are going to do now is to go back to Scott and hit the timer. Go. Staged. We check what it is. We have removed EVP and gateway. We are going to commit. Done. See, all me beer cut. Now we are also going to prove that configuration had been removed correctly. So we are going to take a look at our network and see whether DCI gateway has disappeared. So let's take a look at virtual networks. So you could see VPN gateway directory is empty. If we look at complete network, we will see that VPN gateway has gone. So validation of our intent is there. We are back to previous state. Back to you, Scott. I'll gladly buy you that beer anytime, Jeff. Hey, so it's it's really a big time saver, this into Appster intent-based system, um, introducing a lot of automation to do a lot of the tasks that need to happen with an operator. Um, but what about troubleshooting? What about monitoring? What about the day two and beyond sorts of things? What can we do to re reduce the mean time to innocence? This is a very important point, and thank you for bringing it up. On system side, system always validate that configuration the devices run is in sync with configuration as produced by the system. Anytime there's any change, system will immediately notify you that there's configuration sleep. If someone actually goes and touches system through CLI, it's an anomaly from system perspective. So we will notify you immediately. Let's try to break something. It's called breaking stuff. Let's actually break the system through CLI. So what we are going to be doing now, we are going back to all great Juno CLI to disable an interface. So let's take a look at what we need to do here. We are going to disable interface that leads leaf to the spine, that connects leaf to the spine. But before we do so, we need to validate that's actually correct interface. Let's go back to the system, take a look at leaf one and see which link connects leaf to the spine. So as you could see, it's XC000, and this is exactly the interface we are going to shut down. 
Let's go back into CLI and disable it. Let's commit it now. Okay, our fabric is officially broken. You see red anomalies, and obviously there are. But what you also see, there are dynamic anomalies coming from BGP, coming from your dynamic states. Let's take a look what happened to configuration. As I said, we immediately notify you that there is difference between expected configuration as driven by the system and its data model and actual configuration as seen on the device. And this is exactly what we call configuration sleep. So if we take a look at actual, we will see the delta, which is exactly the change to state of XC interface with disable. So system has notified you about all the inconsistencies and allows you to fix them in number of ways. You could go and manually roll back. You could use time Voyager or you could use function we call accept new configuration and new configuration will actually be accepted. It's very useful for troubleshooting purposes when you need temporary change configuration. So we help operators at day two to validate all the changes to configuration that were intended. We will notify if there are any changes to dynamic states, BGP sessions, BGP route, next hop, anything that's related to routing is done by the system. Back to you, Scott. Did you like it? <laughs> that's pretty slick, Jeff. Um, I could really see this being a, a useful tool, uh, a cool tool for, for operators. Um, you know, great automation capabilities, really being able to abstract a lot of the complexity of EVPN VXLAN into simple templates and blueprints. And then just the, the anomaly detection. Um, and there's a whole lot more there with, with analytics that we can unpack as well. So you know, for our viewers, I encourage you to check out some of the YouTube videos and the longer demos that we've got available to you um, to go deeper into the intent-based analytics capabilities and, and a lot of the day two operational aspects of, of the Appster intent-based system. So um, with that, Jeff, I want to say thanks. Um, really appreciate the demo today. And uh, to our viewers, thanks for your time. And uh, Mansur, back to you. Thank you, Scott and Jeff. Wasn't that cool? In fact, after our customers have used Appstra for a while, they tell us that the biggest difference is in their day two operations. It's always about the time saved in day two and how that translates to speedy changes issues averted, rapid resolution, and fast time to innocence. In this way, Appstra delivers in a fully automated way across the spectrum of day two needs with visibility and insights, incident management, root cause identification, change control, change management, compliance and audit, and maintenance and updates. A customer story helps to sum up the value delivered by Juniper Abstra. A Fortune 50 energy company was in the process of upgrading their infrastructure and knew that starting with proper automation was going to be critical to meet their infrastructure transformation, agility, and reliability goals. They were influenced by the hyperscaler's approach of fully automating their data centers operations at the management plane. However, same as many other Fortune 50 enterprises, they were well aware that they didn't have an army of developers. They needed a turnkey solution that did most of the heavy lifting for them. They also had enterprise specific requirements, such as support for EVPN VXLAN, which hyperscalers don't have. The Juniper Appstra approach checked all the boxes. It was multi-vendor, decoupling the management plane from the hardware and enabling them to separate the software and hardware life cycles. This is unique to Juniper's Appstra solution. They also found Appstra to be powerful, intuitive, and easy to use. They explored replicating Appstra with Ansible and realized that it was impossible to do because of their day two needs. 
by using Appstra, they now have the ability to deploy fabrics and make day two changes using a couple of clicks at the fraction of the time that it used to take them. For example, when they had to upgrade their interfaces from 40 gig to 100 gig. They value that Appstra provide guardrails, which means that network engineers can't make ad hoc changes. Changes need to follow a certain pattern specified in the Appstra blueprint. This is key to infrastructure reliability and predictability. All changes are self-documented and can be audited, which also helps with compliance. Last but not least, closed loop validation ensures changes have the intended effect. So, what does it mean for you? If you're like me, and you don't want to miss out being with your family and kids as often as you can, for me, it's my three young daughters that are the treasure of my life. If you've been late to a soccer game, delayed again by a lengthy troubleshooting session, or if you've spent so many long hours typing the same repetitive commands into a keyboard, device by device, that you were late to dinner with your family, or if you had to rely on hope for the network to stay up while waiting for an early morning change window to apply a patch, or if you've been waiting and waiting for the promises of yet another vendor to get your automation implemented right, then the Astra solution can help you. It's not too good to be true, and it's available now. And it's back to you, Mike, to wrap our session. Thanks, Mansoor. And thanks to Scott and Jeff for the demos. I'll be honest, I haven't had this much fun at work since, well, since ever. It's incredible what's been going on with our data center portfolio. Internally, there's just this palpable energy. But even better than that, there's a persistent buzz with you, an excitement in our customers and partners that's really pretty impressive to see. Yahoo Japan uses Appster to operate in one standard way across three different vendors. They told us that Appster allows them to complete network tasks that used to take days and tens of minutes. For T-Systems, one of the largest data center operators in Europe, Juniper and Appster help to introduce new services, quickly scale to new demand, and deliver assured experiences. Here, the multi-vendor capabilities are critical to extending operational advantages beyond just the Juniper infrastructure. At Aston Martin, with Juniper Solutions, they're looking to use automation techniques such as infrastructure as code. To Aston Martin, that means defining what they want and monitoring what's being delivered. We've been fortunate enough to sit down with many of these customers to talk with their leaders about how they've met the growth and agility requirements of the business without sacrificing reliability, performance, or security. After this session, make sure you check out these customer conversations. If anybody wants to see more of these solutions, or get their hands on them. There's two things you can do, and they're both free. First, attend our upcoming data center boot camp in May, showcasing Appstra. During that half day session, we'll spend most of our time in demo and looking at real examples. Our focus will be introductory, and so don't worry if all you know is not much more than what you've heard in the last half hour. Just click the button on the page to register for the boot camp. And the VLabs folks have got a couple of sandboxes up and running which are accessible for people to get into head over to vlabs.juniper.net. If you don't have an existing Juniper account, you'll need to take that step first, or reach out to your Juniper partner or rep right now. Let me just close with a few parting thoughts. The data center of tomorrow shouldn't be the same as the data center from a year ago, or 10 years ago for some organizations. The technology exists to do it better. For organizations, plotting your path through change is hard. Choosing the right technologies and partners can feel risky. The key is making strategic choices alongside people you trust and moving forward together. For individuals, there's this undercurrent in our industry that these technologies are here to replace you. That couldn't be further from the truth. But we can't move forward if we spend so much effort just to keep from falling back. We, Juniper, are here not just to help your organization. We're here to help you 
Because ultimately, change is a lot more than just adopting new technology. And as hard as change is, it's even harder when all you see is hype and messages intended to confuse. What we're trying to do here is cut through the noise and just get real. Everything we've talked about today is real. The tech, the examples, the customers and the demos. And all of this real, that's what's going to deliver both better networks and better networking. It's time to evolve data center operations. It's time to put experience first.